Good morning, fam. Welcome back to Erica's EDC. It is a beautiful Friday here in New Hampshire, and we are going to talk about the update of the test items for December. We are officially a week into the testing. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of stuff that we're running this month. So I figured we'd go over all of it and do a nice introduction of this custom Benchmade 940 here because everyone is very excited about it. We also are going to do a little bit of testing. So I have some cardboard here and we'll cut that up. But um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about what we're running this month. So for the flashlight, we have this Phoenix E3, no, EO3R V2.0. <laughs> they always have the most ridiculous names. This just came in. This was a gift from Jesse. He's the same guy that got this 940 here for me. He supplies basically everything that I test on the channel at this point because I can't afford it. So he buys everything, but this is a nice little 500 lumen keychain light, very thin, and we're gonna, we're gonna run that for the month. I have it set up here on a little Night Eyes S Beaner with a bead from Grumpy ZDC and my Victorinox Cadet. So those are all together in the pocket. Obviously, we are running the custom Benchmade 940 Osborne in S30V blade steel with G10 scales, pillar construction, really, really nice. This is going to come into the video later, but this is my OG Benchmade 940 that I've been running for many years. We're just gonna use this for comparison purposes. We're not actually testing this. We are testing the Failsafe Goods Snapjack 2.0. This is a wallet made by Ryan over at Failsafe Goods. Really, really nice. So we're going to do an update on that because this is breaking in absolutely beautifully. And then lastly, but not least, in this gorgeous Michael Richter slip, with the wood grain texture. We have the Knife Guy Mods Reverse Slater. Beautiful recover by Josh Francis. This particular one is in chrome vanadium steel. And of course it matches my 940. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, I know a lot of you guys are really jonesing for the info on this, so we'll move everything aside and we'll get that over with first. That way, if you're not interested in the, the test updates, you don't have to watch the rest of the video. So, this is a knife that I wanted the moment it came out. The moment I saw that Benchmade was finally offering the customization tool for the 940, I wanted one with orange scales. I wanted to say covers because I'm so used to talking about damn traditional knives now. And these are called covers. <laughs> I wanted to say that for this. These are scales. Um, did I have 200 and who knows how many dollars to do this? Absolutely not. So Jesse, being the EDC angel that he is, had this built for me. So this is obviously a 940 with all satin hardware. I didn't do, I didn't want any black on this. My original one has black hardware, which granted it's kind of worn off in some areas, so it looks silver, but the original 940 has black hardware, the black clip, silver, or satin, I should say, axis lock and silver blade, but everything else is black, which let me just say, I think it's kind of weird to do all black hardware, but the satin axis lock, like either make everything satin or make that black too. I don't know. It just kind of is weird to me, but um, that's the original. That's what it looks like. Granted, you can't see completely because it's beat to shit, but I wanted all satin for this one and I did put my own clip on it. It was sent with the silver satin split arrow clip. But this is one that I actually, it got worn out so much that I ended up just stripping the black coating off of it. And this is what it looks like now, which I really like. And it matches the rest of the knife. So 
that's what I wanted. I think it looks fantastic. Let's talk a little bit about how it came from Benchmade, right? Because we all know that Benchmade's quality control can be a little spotty. Um, I have mentioned before that my first 940 came with a blade that had like these blue and purple and brown hues and it looked basically completely burnt. So I ended up sending it back and asking for a blade replacement, but they, they just sent me a brand new 940. This is, you know, five years ago or whatever, but they, they were really great and they just sent me a brand new 940, new everything, and this is that same exact one. So I've had really great customer service experiences with Benchmade in terms of their warranty. Um, I've only had that one kind of like, you know, bad apple from Benchmade. Otherwise, surprisingly, all of my knives directly from them have been immaculate, especially from the custom shop. I don't generally order their basic model knives directly from them because they're more expensive. I'll order from like DLT Trading usually. And those were generally good too. Like edges, maybe a little crusty and burnt, centering on the bug outs probably not perfect but generally speaking not not horrible and when you order directly from benchmade it tends to be way better however with the custom shop knives which i have ordered a handful they've always been absolutely flawless i'm figuring because you're paying that um higher price for the custom aspects of it and because somebody is probably putting a little more attention to detail into it they tend to be pretty freaking perfect from the custom shop. This one is no exception. So let me see if I can pick that up. Dead ass centered. Dead ass center. Absolutely razor, razor sharp edge right from the factory. And even beautiful bevels, no burr. Let me see if I can, sorry, I'm like leaning over the truck bed here try and get this up close so you can see that bevel is nice and even on both sides it came so scary freaking sharp with no burr now the action isn't flicky like my other one yet partially because it hasn't broken in okay so this one you you have to remember is you know five plus years old so this one just swings freely and um it is really broken in nicely okay this one isn't quite there yet action is nice and smooth i did put kpl knife pivot lube in the pivot and it will like if i flick it it'll close i really have to wrist flick it and it and it will close but it's not free swinging like the other one yet and i and i will say if i took the actual pivot screw out, took the blade out, and lubricated the washers themselves and put them all back together, I think it would freely swing. I just took the applicator needle and just squeezed it down into here and tried to kind of move it through. And I and I think it actually just needs to be kind of like taken apart and lubed and put back together. And I'm sure the action would be better. But for this, just having a quick little um, squirt in there, uh, like your mom, it, it it's actually really nice. So that's a plus. Um, everything came beautifully assembled. Really like the standoffs. Everything is just perfect on this. Absolutely perfect. It does look dingy because um, being the queen or king, what have you, of use your shit, uh, the moment I touched it, it got dirty. That's just how it goes. So I've only had this in my possession for like two days and I don't, I genuinely don't even know what this black staining is. I have no idea. I've been using this a lot. Um, so I, I don't know what that is, but it's already getting dingy and dirty. And hopefully one day, if there is a God, it will look like that. One day, after many, many years of use, it'll look like a piece of shit like this, which I absolutely adore. Um, so one thing that I actually really like about this is how lightweight it is. And it, it's still very rugged feeling, like you don't have any flex or anything. But just with the flow through construction and these pillars, it it's just very lightweight. And I really like that you can actually clean this out, right? Because on the original, we have that 
purple back spacer that closes the whole thing. And a lot of people don't like that. I adore it, I really do. But it does make it tricky to clean inside of there out. You have to use like a, a Q-tip or maybe some compressed air or something to clean this knife out because it, it's enclosed. So a lot of people don't really like that. Um, on the G10 models, you have a flow through construction, which is really nice to clean out. Very, very easy. Another cool thing is that if you have the correct cordage, you can put a lanyard on the 940 now, which I did the first day. However, I was using um, like this tactical cord stuff. It's very thin, way thinner than paracord. And I put a lanyard on here, but unfortunately the cord was just still too thick. And what happened was when I would close the knife, the tip would catch in the very top of that fabric on the lanyard. And, and then I couldn't open the knife and I would have to kind of maneuver it around and get it to let go then I could open it and it was also like over time over the day like slicing the top of that lanyard so you're gonna have to use something pretty thin because that blade comes down so close to that pillar but you can absolutely run a lanyard in there if you figure out what cordage to use maybe a really thin leather cord or a crazy thin paracord but you sh can surely you know cinch something up around there I'll probably do that again soon once I figure out what I want to run on there, but um, so far failed at that. <laughs> um, but this is an absolutely beautiful piece from Benchmade, and I'm really excited to test it for the month and see how it does. I think it's going to do fantastic. I mean, hell, I've put, I've put this one through the ringer, and it just doesn't give up. Um, so I, I don't see why this one would be any different. I do have a 15 DPS edge on my original one, which I don't know if you'll pick up because it's so filthy. I'm hoping you can see kind of the, the thickness here of that bevel, how laid back it is. So I had a little bit of trouble with this 940 years ago when I first got it. And during, I believe my second round of testing with it, I laid the edge back to 15 DPS to see if it would slice better. And it, it absolutely does. This is a game changer for this knife. Um, it's a very thick stock and you do not have a lot of space here for that to thin out. So the BTE, the behind the edge thickness on this particular blade in the 940 is very thick. It does not allow you to slice very well. However, if you remove some material and you lay that edge back, it really does help. It, it slices much better. So this is a, a really good performer now that it has that laid back edge. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that right away. Ooh, my Stanley just fell. Stanley, get up. Actually, I'm thirsty. I had pizza for breakfast. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna lay this back yet. I think I'm obviously going to run the factory edge, right? Because that's part of the testing. We wanna make sure, we wanna, we wanna know how this factory S30V is. So we'll run that. When it comes time to sharpen this, I'm not sure if I'm going to lay the edge back or leave it as it is. We'll, we'll see. I'm sure at some point I'll lay it back because it just works better, but um, I'm not sure if we'll get to that point during this testing. We'll see. But there's the introduction to the custom 940. Absolutely incredible. I can't wait to just beat the shit out of this thing and make it look like a piece of trash. I love that. Um, this is absolutely going to be a beater. I'm also really excited because Michael Richter has one of these OG ones in the mail on the way to him from Jesse. So I got this one for Christmas. He got the original one. His is on the way to him. I can't wait to hear how Michael likes his or dislikes. You know, you never know. Um, but these are just some of the best knives for, for real. I, I, I really do like the 940. For, for my work, my lifestyle, this knife is dang near perfect for me. I, I really, really enjoy them. So there's that. Let's just do a little update on the rest of the stuff that we're testing. Um, the reverse slater here. So this has been doing absolutely incredibly well. I laid this CV edge back the moment I got it, basically. Really fat 15 DPS bevel on this bad boy. Now, obviously, it has the teeners, which you can see on the bevel now. Um... But this just keeps going, guys. This edge 
now that it's laid back and I removed that completely burnt crusty steel, this is still crazy sharp, guys. The CV, I've said this before, the CV steel from Case is their best steel. I love it. I have such a good experience with it. Like I said, you got to remove that fatigued edge. You've got to lay the edge back. But once you do, these actually really are working knives. Like this thing is a razor blade still. So bitey. It's incredible. So um, this, you know, had that one sharpening. Haven't needed to touch it since. I haven't even stropped it and I've been using it for, you know, this one I've been using for two weeks because it came in earlier than the 940. But you can you can even see I haven't stropped it because you can see the teeners on, on the edge bevel. Though that wouldn't be there if I had stropped it, right? It would have been nice and silver and shiny um, if I've touched that with a strop. I haven't. I haven't needed to. And I've been using this like crazy. It's just unbelievable what this CV steel can do when you have a proper edge on it. So this is just doing phenomenal. This knife is not running on washers at all. Um, it's actually running directly on the micarta there. First time experiencing that. I was a little nervous because micarta, you know, in terms of wear and tear, is not like the most, um, I don't know, reliable material for moving parts, in my opinion. Like, I really think having a buffer, a barrier in between the micarta and the blade would would be best um but surprisingly this is just not budging like the action still very snappy it doesn't feel mushy it feels really good actually and from what i can see there's just no wear in there at all and i'm using this like crazy um so surprisingly running the blade directly on micarta is totally fine so far we'll see how it does at the end of the month how it feels and what it looks like, but rock solid still, no movement up and down, side to side. Gapping has not occurred at all. Half stop is still really prominent. Still dead freaking center. Like this, we may be onto something with this. This is a very lightweight carry, um, very thin profile no washers and it's working incredibly well um this we really might be onto something with this one because if we can offer these you know with less labor put in less less parts all that good stuff you could you can really get these for a good price right if we don't have to upcharge for all those things so just a simple classic thin lightweight sodbuster junior running on micarta with you know some pops of color and stuff I don't know. We, we're, I think we're on to something with Reverse Slater here. I really do. Very, very nice. I'm absolutely obsessed with this. Absolutely obsessed. And I just think it looks so nice in this natural leather slip from Richter Knives with that beautiful wood grain texture. Let's see if the sun will catch that. Holy smokes. Look at how stunning that is. It matches my wallet. That's why I'm carrying it two natural raw leather products here this one will look just like this and you know I, I, I would figure another week or so but that is just that is absolutely stunning so been running this together um just so i have a little bit of like a pattern here with my carry because ocd gorgeous really happy about that um the wallet you know there's not much to say it's it's perfect uh, Ryan, I believe, ran the pre-sale on this like a day or two ago. This is a just a beast of a wallet. Beautiful. But, but look at how much that has compressed. Remember what it looked like the other day on the introduction to this wallet? Like, look at how thin that is compared to what it was. It was really a beefcake the other day. It was like that. It's really compressed into itself nicely. These corners here are really getting much more subtle sandwiching very nicely but this is just a beautiful wallet super heavy duty absolutely love it like you have so much to work with in here being able to put your bills fold up checks in there run all your cards I even have a little toothpick up in there beautiful lanyard hole I will say he's making some lanyards to run with these 
kind of like an old school style long lanyard with a either a fish hook style or a lobster claw at the end. Um, he's gonna send me one of those to run on this once he gets them made. So be on the lookout for that, but just a, a gorgeous piece right there. And um, yeah, really excited to see how this Phoenix does. It's turning on in my pocket sometimes, even when I do lock it. So you can, you can lock this model by pressing that three times, but I have noticed that even when I locked it, it turned on once or twice in my pocket. So aside from that, um, this is a really nice little light. 500 lumens, this tiny little thing. And I, I actually think it looks really cool with the lanyard I put on, like if we take the clip off. I really like how that looks. Like I said, this bead is from Grumpy's EDC. I forget which model, it might be like the muzzle loader or something. Um, but look at how nice that looks. Like if you take the Swiss Army knife off and you just have this as a little package. I really like that. And just for just for reference, uh, if you haven't watched my videos before, I, I really like running lanyards on a lot of things. And I almost view it as a, a foldable extension of the product, whether it be a knife, a flashlight, um, doesn't really matter. This light is so small. I mean, it's really small. So holding this, especially like maybe with gloves on or if your hands are cold or something like it's just because it's so slick and tiny, like it might just be hard to hold on to. So um, I really like running lanyards because it gives you more of like a full size experience with a small product and then it just folds up into the same size and doesn't really add any weight or anything. Like I could use a way smaller bead. I just thought this one looked cool. But like, you know, you open that up and you have a handle, right? Also easier to find in your pocket. Definitely there's, you know, an aesthetic portion that goes into this formulation here. Um, I, I, I just really like how beads look and how lanyards look. But yeah, uh, there's that, you know, clip all these together, run that down in your pocket. So yeah, there's, there's all the stuff. Um, before I head out, let's just see how this factory edge runs on this just for, you know, testing purposes. Um, and we have it documented. Let me lift you guys up a little bit here. I'm not showing my face because I don't have makeup on yet. Um, I actually look like a dumpster fire in real life. I, I've been working all morning outside and with the dogs and I have no makeup on. So uh, me, me nervous about showing my face. I don't like that. Let's see. Let's see how this factory edge does. And like I stated earlier, you know, I started using this the moment it got here. Nonstop, but... Let's just kind of see how sharp she is. Y'all can see, right? Come on. That's sharp, guys. I mean, this is just, it is like a hot knife through butter, I swear. It, this is very, I mean, there's just no effort extremely sharp so I'm really impressed with that factory edge um, this is this is a lot of fun to use but that's really all I've got for you guys today I hope that you have an awesome weekend I may have another video up tomorrow or something but um I wanted to throw that at you guys because y'all have been begging for that one maybe Nikki and I will make a video tomorrow and talk about some knives she's got some fun stuff that's come in and that she's been using stuff but um yeah let me know down in the comments what you're carrying let me know if you're gonna try to pick up one of these custom 940s or if you have a friend that will do it for you because they're so damn expensive <laughs> let me know if you match your cups with your freaking knives <sighs> too funny i will see you guys on the next video i love you so much go use your shit learn how to sharpen your knives and i will see you on the next video i love you so so much fam take care